the way that people buy products and services nowadays has changed. What accountants need to do is pivot the way they do their marketing and sales so it matches up with their audience. If you are on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, if you're using Instagram, you know, if you're doing webinars, the problem is, is you don't own those platforms. The only thing that you will own is your own database. Welcome to this episode of How To With Pixie and XU Magazine. I'm delighted to have with me today, Amanda C. Watts. Amanda, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Jordan. It's great to be here. No problem. So why don't you just give us a quick intro to who you are and what you do? Yeah, so uh, I run a business called Oomph Global, and we specialize in sales and marketing superpowers for accountants, CPAs, and bookkeepers. Great. And in this episode, I know we're going to be looking at how to generate leads online for yeah. accountants. So let's just start right at the very beginning. Why should accountants even care about generating leads online? Yeah, it's a really good question. And if you'd asked me 20 years ago that question, I would have said they shouldn't. So I would have said they're absolutely fine building their business the way they have always done, which is word of mouth and referrals. However, the way that people buy products and services nowadays has changed. So what accountants need to do is pivot the way they do their marketing and sales so it matches up with their audience. They can still get referrals. They can still use word of mouth to get clients. However, they're not in control. So the reason why we talk about using online marketing to get clients is to put the accountant in control of taking a potential buyer along the customer journey so that they go from never heard of them before to going, oh my gosh, this is the accountant for me. So that's why they need Need to be looking at online marketing 20 years ago they didn't right now i'm afraid that they do they need to get that control back nice nice and you mentioned there about the customer journey yeah. briefly explain what that customer journey looks like yeah so when someone decides that they need help um actually let's take that back one step actually uh, google in 2011 created this thing called zmot which is the zero moment of truth so the zero moment of truth is when someone is struggling with something, they will Google a solution to that struggle. And what we have to be really mindful of is what comes up when someone has a problem and they Google it. Is it you and your accounting firm or is it your competitor's accounting firm or is it absolutely nothing? And the business coach out there is getting your clients because they're really good at showing up on Google. So the zero moment of truth is the start of the customer journey where someone is in Google or even Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn typing in going, how do I do my accounts? Or can I claim back for this on my tax? Or I don't like my accountant, where will I find a new one? And we have to make sure that we control the start of that journey and then take people, so these, these ideal clients, along that customer journey so that they can then buy from you. So it starts off with the zero moment of truth. You have to show up so that you can then become someone who is an advisor to these prospects. So they then go, oh, do you know what? Actually, I want to work with you, ABC accountants, because you've supported me throughout all of my research and I trust you. Um, that's a, a very quick overview of the customer journey. Great. Okay. One of the things I'm always conscious with uh, when it comes to accountants and marketing is, is the idea that a lot of these kind of target businesses, especially some of the bigger ones, they probably already have accountants. So um, it's not like me going out to buy a new pair of trainers. I'm just looking for some new trainers. I might already have a perfectly good pair of trainers. And in this case, businesses might already have a perfectly good accountant. So what can other accountants do to put themselves forward as the next best alternative? Yeah, absolutely. So what I have done is created something called the traffic light method and the traffic life the traffic light method takes uh, the accountant's potential buyer on a journey and it works really well for accountants who are trying to take other people's business. Okay. So it starts with red, then goes to amber, then goes to green and it follows like this. So when someone's at red, they don't know they've got a problem. So the kind of information that an accountant has to create when there is a business that's with another accountant is to highlight the mistakes that business might be making from using the other accountant. So the five big mistakes a restaurant's making when it comes to choosing their accountant, for example. Okay. So that's when they're at red. They don't know they have a problem. So your job as the accountant is to disrupt and illuminate the problem. Okay. First part of the traffic light method. 
Second part is when they're at amber. So you've disrupted someone in their tracks going, oh my God, I didn't know I was making those mistakes. And now you have to educate them through content and through conversations to say, you know, this is the mistake you're making, but here's how you overcome it. And you have to give so much value and give the answers when people are kind of Googling, why am I making this mistake? How do I overcome that mistake? That people then go, oh, do you know what? I now understand. I now know what I'm missing. Who can help me? And that's when on the traffic light method journey, they go to green and you're at the case studies. You're at, this is why our accounting firm's great. So the customer journey is described a lot for accountants as the traffic light method. They go from interrupting and illuminating and disrupting the pain that your ideal client's going through, educating them, and then finally showing that you're the accounting firm for them. Unfortunately, most accountants just say, I help with tax, now buy my stuff, and miss out that entire traffic light method journey. Does that make sense, Jordan? Yeah, that makes sense. So what we're, what we're describing here is like the full marketing funnel. Yeah, exactly. This around, not this way around. Uh, yeah, taking yeah, people exactly. from being unaware of even having problems to wanting to actually buy from uh, another accountant. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and, sorry, go on. No, go on, please. I was going to say, when uh, accountants do marketing and they get word of mouth referrals, they, they've completely skipped everything in the red and amber categories of the customer journey. And whilst uh, it might be great that they look up and they ask for that referral, they're going to fight you on price because they haven't seen your value. So that's why the customer journey is so important is, yeah, you can still get clients through word of mouth, but they're going to be the crappy clients. I call them vampire clients, the kind that suck the life out of you. Um, whereas if you're purposefully doing marketing, you'll attract the higher value clients clients that will see your value before they even get into a telephone conversation with you nice yeah okay so when it comes to this customer journey and this traffic light method where is the place that accountants need, need to start what's the what's the first thing they need to do to actually start you know getting this ball rolling and generating some kind of leads online yeah, absolutely. So first of all, they need to wake up their ideal client. So it starts with the red content, the disrupt and illuminate. And one of the things that I talk a lot to my clients about is you only need really one piece of red content. You only need to disrupt once. So that's creating an ebook or something that is a value that says, you know, these are the five big mistakes you're making. Here's the seven big mistakes. Here's an outline of a, um, a diagnostic so that you can then actually find out actually you're making these problems is something that gives huge huge value and preferably in exchange for an email uh, address okay so one thing i would like all of you who are listening today to understand is if you are on facebook linkedin twitter if you're using Instagram, you know, if you're doing webinars, the problem is, is you don't own those platforms. And the only thing that you will own is your own database. So the people who have signed up and given you their email address. Now, two examples very quickly of how it's so important. Like I have realized this um, recently. So in the past six months, I've had my Facebook advertising account canceled four times. I've been shut out of LinkedIn for an entire week, mid launch of a program. Okay. Now, because I I have a database of 15,000 accountants that did not ruin my uh, my lead generation and it didn't ruin my opportunities. However, what I would say is that if I had been reliant on LinkedIn and Facebook to fill my program, I would have been stuffed, completely stuffed. So the first thing that they need to do is get people's email addresses in exchange for that red co content, because once you've got someone's email address, you can then take them on that customer journey. That would definitely be their first step. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I agree. I think a lot of the time, accountants tend to focus on vanity metrics like numbers of followers and connections on LinkedIn. And it doesn't necessarily translate to business just because somebody follows you on LinkedIn doesn't necessarily mean they, that they're an ideal client or would even consider working with you down the line. So a big question to you guys is, do you want to be rich or do you want to be famous? <laughs> what about both? You can be both, but you have to be rich first. OK, so uh, everything that I do when I talk about marketing is generating those leads and finding a way to get those leads into conversation. So it's always uh, it's, it's known as direct response marketing. So it's making sure that you get some kind of response from your audience. A like and a comment is not a response that you're looking for. You can take a like and a comment into some direct response, but you have to purposely take that action. Um, so yeah, you can be rich and you can be famous, but I used to be super famous, but I tell you, I wasn't rich. Whereas now when you combine the two together, it can catapult your success, but you want to be rich first, not famous first. Great. Okay. So once people have created this ebook, they've created this uh, piece of red content that's going to really disrupt people. Yep. 
where do they go with it? How do they promote it? How do they get it right in front of the, the right people in order to get their, their, their email addresses? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we have to ask people to buy. So I can guarantee that uh, as an accountant, you will be on people's email addresses. You will be watching them on Facebook and LinkedIn. And at no point, even if you want their services, you don't reach out to them. So what we have to do is understand that people do not reach out, even if they really want your help and we have to give them the opportunity to respond to us and go oh thank heavens they reached out so for an accountant what i want them to do is every time they get a like or a comment on their social media they then reach out to that person and say thank you very much what resonated is there anything i can help you with okay start that conversation exactly the same with regards to uh, anyone that you're connected with on linkedin so uh, there's a formula that we use which is you you go hunting so you connect with your ideal clients on linkedin or facebook or twitter and i call that going hunting then what we do is we advance through messaging and through starting conversations and then if those advanced advancing messages and the advancing marketing that we're doing doesn't work because the buyer isn't ready to buy. It's not because you're rubbish at you know, marketing. Sometimes people just don't buy because it's not the right time. So then what we do is we go farming and farming is the providing of the good content and staying in touch with people and nurturing. That's the nurturing part of the business. So you choose your ideal client and you go hunting for them. You advance them into conversations and then you farm your list over years and years and years because not everyone buys straight away, but you farm them through giving excellent excellent value and then eventually when the time is right they might just say to you actually the time is right can we have that conversation cool okay so g give me an example of, of what this conversation looks like in practice so let's say you've posted something on linkedin i've hit like i've left the comments in oh, i really like this article amanda what's going to happen next yeah, so I'm going to send you a message, Jordan. I'm going to go, Jordan, thank you so much for commenting on my update. Uh, I would love to know what resonated most. And then you would respond with, oh, I thought it was great because you did X, Y, Z, or you said X, Y, Z. And I would say, that's fantastic. Is marketing a priority for you right now? And someone will go, no, not really. I'm focusing on systems. And then I would then turn that around to why do you want systems? And I'd understand where that prospect is in their thinking. OK, because actually many people, whilst they would and especially with accountants as well, you think that you have to get your app sorted and your systems sorted. However, what you need is ideal clients and then you can work out what it, what systems and apps you need. So I need to diagnose and help you diagnose. So the messaging backwards and forwards, which I want you to do for your clients. So I'll give an example for you to do with your clients is you would say to them, right, what's your situation like in your business? You know, is profit more important? or is cash flow more important for you then they'll come back and say well profit's more important and you can say what's your biggest challenges around profit and they can open up and share that with you and then you can say do you know what i'd love to jump on a call for 15 minutes see if i can help you um is next wednesday a good idea and they'll say yeah that's great so you then have a call in the diary remember the only way you'll get clients is through conversations conversations leads to clients so your job every day is to generate those conversations. And if I don't have so sort of, I would say six calls in my diary on my sales days, like sales conversations, I get the heebie-jeebies. And you as an accountant should be feeling that as well because your job is to create loads of leads so you get the high value clients. Conversations is what you need to be generating. Okay, the, 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 this all sounds really great. And I guess the, the question that might be in a lot of accountants' minds is, this also sounds extremely time consuming. Yes, it is. Um, how on earth am I going to find the time to sit on LinkedIn and respond to everybody that likes and comments on my, yeah, it's great. my post? How much, how much time does this take, ideally? Yeah, so five hours a week, initially, is what we say. Then what happens is you're going to find you're saying the same thing time and time again. When you find you're saying the same thing time and time again, then you get some support. So you could get a marketing assistant. You can outsource it. There are plenty of uh, outsourced marketing people over in the Philippines, for example. There's a company called FreeUp. And what my clients do, especially when they do my Momentum program, is they learn how to do it themselves. They test everything. So it's hard work for a couple of months, and it's exhausting. And then you go, right. Now we have the formula. Now we get some support and it works really, really well. So yeah, it is hard work. But what I would say is if you don't put the effort into marketing and sales, then how are you going to get the high value clients that will then free up your life so you can have the freedom that you're looking for? You've got to do the hard work. And I was having a conversation with Ashley this morning, one of my clients, and she said, you know, how did I fit everything in when I was a single mom? And I was like, do you know what? I used to work till two in the morning. And you, there's a saying, isn't there? Uh, entrepreneurship is doing today 
what other people won't. So tomorrow you can have what other people can't. OK, um, so what you have to think about is five hours a week is hard work now, but in two years time or even two months time, you could have a practice of your dreams versus no, I can't be bothered to do the work and I carry on stressed out, overworked and going gray very fast. You know, it's you've got to make that decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you brought up hard work and effort in terms of marketing. So I think a lot of people see marketing as a silver bullet. They see it as this uh, kind of thing that's going to fix everything overnight. Um, in reality, it doesn't work like that, does it? You, you know, it takes time. You have to figure this stuff out. You have, even if you have a process to follow, mm -hmm. there's still like a period of actually like figuring it all out and getting it to work for you. That you have, you to, have to test and measure. And I've got some clients that in week two of my program will go and get a 20 grand client. I've got others where nine months later, they're still, you know, testing and measuring and they're just getting clients. Now I tell you the one thing though, is that those in week two who get clients are the ones that take action fast. They're the ones that do as they're told that, don't question and just actually um, move that needle super fast. The ones where it takes months are the ones, and I'm really sorry, but the ones that go, mm, I can't do that. Oh, I don't know whether I could send that message or, oh, I don't know if I could record a video. And there's so many mindset blockages that you have to work through the mindset stuff first. And it might sound a little bit woo woo and it might sound a little bit out there, but it's your mindset that's holding you back, not time. Okay. okay. Time isn't the problem. It's mindset let's let's pivot really quickly into mindset then what would you say are the top three mindset tips and tricks that you have for accountants that are trying to get into this frame of mind of generating leads online yeah totally so you will never be motivated to do marketing so you have to be disciplined so it's discipline not motivation simple as that even some days i wake up in the morning and go i don't want to record a video but i have to because it's in the diary it's one of those things okay so it's discipline over motivation is the first thing OK, there is no magic mindset pill. It's understanding that it's a thing called the compound effect. So the post that you post today might get you clients in three months time. But if you post a post today and tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, all of a sudden that compound effect kicks in and you start to get the flood of leads. But most people give up just before that compound effect really kicks in. So it's, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep going would be the second thing. And the third thing is do you want to be rich or famous so that's the mindset thing it's very easy to create content focus on direct response marketing which is getting a response from people that gets them into conversations it's conversations that lead to conversions not content okay content won't get you clients it will build trust but it will not get people reaching out to you until way down the line that compound effect just kicks in all right. So they would be the three big things that I would say. And don't ever expect to love marketing. It's not your job. You love accounting. You've got to do it. though. You I don't love do accounting, it. but I still have to keep an eye on my numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be done. Um, so you mentioned a few times already um, that conversations equals clients. Yep. So aside from some LinkedIn outreach and maybe messaging people on other social media channels, what other advice do you have for accountants in order to generate as many conversations with prospects as possible? Yeah, you have to ask at all times. So if you, and I know that we're talking about LinkedIn quite a lot, but if you look at your LinkedIn profile in the about section at the end, well, first of all, make sure you use all 2000 characters that you're able to use. But at the end, I bet you don't have a call to action. OK, simple as that. If you write a blog, I bet at the end you don't have a call to action. I bet on your website you don't have a way where I can download a piece of red content. OK, I bet if I look at every single page on your website, it's just bland and boring and speaking accountantese and not talking in your ideal client's language. There are so many gaps in accountants marketing everywhere along the board that actually if you just tighten it all up and constantly are saying we specialize in helping these people to achieve xyz would you like to talk about this you will get clients from it relying on a contact page on your website is not going to get you those calls in the diary um, another thing that i would suggest everyone is using everyone in your team as well is a link where people can book direct into your calendar so rather than having that email tennis backwards and forwards let's have a way where someone can book straight into one of your team's calendars even if they're working part-time just open up their calendar on the times that they work and that takes away a lot of the heartache and the pain you can have one for prospects you can have one for clients life will become so much easier nice nice okay rounding off then i know we've covered quite a lot of ground in the last 20 minutes or so yeah. um let, let's boil this all down into an action plan. What are the, the, the kind of three, four, five steps that people need to follow right now in, in order to get moving with this stuff? 
Yeah, absolutely. So to go hunting, and I spoke about hunting earlier, to go hunting, you need to be super clear on your ideal client. And that means that you have to do that dreaded word, which is niching. And I talk about niching your marketing, not your practice. So I want to take away all that fear. All we're doing is running a marketing campaign to test to see if it's a good hunting niche for you. Okay, so the first things first is close your eyes and jump and go, actually, I'm just going to target these people. All right. The way that you choose whether or not they're a good ideal client for you is to choose a business that has money. So probably a turnover of half a million if you want to offer advisory. It's a business that you can find easily online and it is a business that you like and respect. Now, you don't have to love these people. It doesn't have to be all about your passion, but you have to like and respect these business owners. OK, so you choose your hunting niche. The second thing is making sure that your message is not bland and boring. So not I'm an accountant. It's I specialize in helping these people overcome these problems so they can have this kind of life. So it resonates with their heart and their head. Okay? OK, it's really important that is relevant and resonates. So that's the first thing. The second thing is have the foundations in place for your mindset. So that's understanding that marketing is a roller coaster. You're going to have massive highs when you make a sale and you're going to have massive lows whilst you're tweaking and measuring it. You need to make sure that your mindset is strong enough and you're disciplined that you enjoy the highs and you go, oh, I expected a low. Let's get out of it. As simple as that. Then the third thing is that you need to book audition calls. So an audition call is a 15 minute conversation where you see if your ideal client is a really good fit. You do not go and have hour long sales meetings because you are just wasting your time. And you 100% agree with me, Jordan, and you've been through this yourself as well, haven't you? You're very good at these things. So what we need to understand is that you need to audition your clients. You need to put yourself in position of control and you don't just take on anyone. So you don't want a practice full of vampire clients you want a practice full of high value clients and then once they've been auditioned if they're a good fit you can sit down and then propose your ideas to them find out your ideal clients pains but the first thing that you have to do is choose who it is that you're going after otherwise the rest falls down then get your mindset right then only book audition calls don't ever go into hour-long sales calls and then get people in sales conversations they're the only four things that matter that's all they should be focused on all the time how do i go along this process Nice. Amanda, that's been great. Thank you very much. I think there's a, a lot of, a lot of great content that people can use there to get started generating leads right. online. Awesome. Any final comments or thoughts? Um, yeah. Prolific beats perfect. OK, just take massive action and understand that you don't want to do it. But what you do want is high value clients and you have to be disciplined to get it. OK, so I would just say just. Focus on why you're doing it. Don't focus on the fact that you have to do marketing and nobody wanted to do marketing. All right. Nice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.